Hello and welcome to the Yes to Life show on UK Health Radio. I'm Robin Daly, regular host for the show and founder of the UK charity Yes to Life, that's been flying the flag for integrative medicine for the best part of two decades. If you're new to the show, you may not know what integrative medicine is. Simply put, it's the best of all worlds, an approach that brings together and combines all that conventional oncology has to offer with a mass of other approaches that have been developed to provide support in the broadest sense of the word, in mind, body and spirit. The integrative approach is proving its worth in better outcomes and a vastly improved quality of life, so it's well worth investigating should you be unfortunate enough to be facing a diagnosis of cancer. In this week's show, nutritional therapist Kirsten Chick, who's a regular and hugely popular guest here, introduces the double bill of events that Yeston Hive has on offer this year to raise awareness of the breadth and depth of integrative medicine for cancer, or integrative oncology as it is specifically called. I was speaking to Kirsten over the internet at her home near the south coast. Kirsten, uh, brilliant to have you back on the show. Morning, Robin. It's really lovely to be back. Great. So it has been a while, and it is always such a pleasure to chat. Uh, today's show, something of a warm-up for this year's upcoming conferences that together go under the title of You and Your Cancer Team. So we've got two events. The first is an online event on the 17th of June, and the second, a real in-person event held in central London on the 7th of October. And the reason I'm speaking to you about it is that you're in the key position of having worked to develop the concept and the content of both events with me. And you're also playing a central role at both events. So massive thanks for all that. And to start out today, can you give us a kind of top level description of what the events are about and what the intention is behind them? Yes. So the whole theme, as you said, is you and your cancer team. And when we think of a cancer team, we normally think of um, the, the oncologists and the medical professions that they sit around the table with when they're discussing somebody's case with the, the person with the diagnosis, usually not in the room at all. Um, but what we're talking about here is building your integrative cancer team. So these are people who are, that you know, they might be uh, cancer coaches, they might be nutritional therapists, exercise specialists, herbalists, massage therapists, people with expertise in working with people with cancer who are on your team with you if you, you know, if you have a cancer diagnosis. So they are they're with you, supporting you through every step of the way. Um, so, and this is really important because one of the key things that has come out of various audit surveys and studies, including um, Dr. Kelly Turner's Radical Remission, um, project is that it's really crucial to have integrative care, so um, complementary um, support, um, and it's really important to have a support team, to have people really giving you what you need through that. Not not being on your own with this. Um, the, the the whole journey from diagnosis through to years later. Um, people do do a lot better when they've got a team. Um, and so this is what we wanted to really promote is the why it's really important, the benefits of having this this integrative cancer team um, and also introducing people to what that might look like. So we've got lots of people at both events who are going to talk about the benefits of various different therapies and modalities um, and approaches but also um, give tasters so there's a lot of experiential workshops um, and sessions so people can really come along and uh, find out more and find out some of the kind of science behind why this is all good and people's learn about people's experience of it but also experience some of these things themselves so they can you can think yeah i'm really drawn to this that 
nice but didn't do anything for me but that I'm really interested in whether it's art therapy or um, reflexology or nutrition or any of the other things that we're going to have at both events right so yeah yeah so um you know and very much what you've just said underlines the fact that this is called you and your cancer team and so you know one person's cancer team won't look like another one's and uh, it's very much people finding the support that they feel is right for them and so we're, we're trying to help people with well knowing what's out there so they at least know what their choices are and and giving them a taste so as they might start to decide uh, which are for them which is brilliant because there's, there is so much out there at the moment, but it's still so difficult for many people to access. Um, mm. You know, back you, you and I have been both working in this field for, what, 20 years, and I had cancer maybe 25 years ago. Back then, there were very few people working in that field, um, and and it was really hard to access it. I was quite lucky. I um, I met one or two people who became part of my cancer team um i don't know if i'd have you know realized that was what was going on at the time right pretty early on and it was just invaluable i couldn't have got through the 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 few years after diagnosis and treatment actually without them Mm. okay we'll hear a bit more about that later um okay so we've got two events uh, and you can actually book both together as a bundle so what's the difference between them and how does somebody choose between them and why might they want to go to both well the first one is saturday the 17th of june and it's online um the second one is saturday the 7th of october and it's in person in london so already um you might be thinking oh, actually i can't make it to london i'm just going to do the online one or i really love in-person events so i'm going to go to the london one um but not so vibed about online or but actually they they do work really well together so if you're up for doing both then that that would be recommended and the first one is called building your integrative team a practical introduction to the resources available to those diagnosed with cancer and because it's online there are um it's more kind of speakers than workshops but most of those speakers are going to be or all of those speakers are going to be giving um practical tips or um actual mini online tasters as well of what's going on so for example mm-hmm. um Actually, one of the sessions just before lunchtime is with Hayley North, who's a holistic chef. So she's going to be giving some really good kitchen tips and also then sharing a recipe. So you can either cook along and then have everyone will be having the same lunch or you can just, you know, have whatever you want to eat, but but save that as a recipe that you might want to do in the future. Um, so at the at the online events, I'm going to be speaking about different approaches to diet and nutrition. We've got Scarlett Roberts talking about movement as medicine. So um, looking at all the different types of movement and exercise. We've got Tracy Story, aka Ten Sui, looking at um, reconnecting with nature and rhythms. Um, we've got the cook along session. Um, Sophie True is coming to do a breathwork session so she'll be talking about that doing some breathwork Dr Catherine Zolman um, giving a really good overview of all the different modalities you can look at and we've got Isabel Galliano coming on to talk about she, Isabel's a health coach specialising in cancer um, so some really good cancer coach wisdom there um, and then we've got a really nice session at the end where we're going to talk about how to really get started. So, you, you know, often we come away from these online things, don't we? And we're like, oh, that was great. I've got loads of information. And the next day, we've gotten it all. Right. So we, <laughs> we don't want that to happen. So we've got a session where we're going to really help you kind of get a plan and integrate the information. So that's the online event. Um, the in-person event in London. So we've got a few main sessions in the main auditorium and then we've got lots of breakout sessions with lots of different work uh, workshops where people can um, 
get to grips with, you know, really experience a lot of these different things. I think we've got maybe 15 or 16 different workshops over four different sessions in each session. Right. So lots of, lots of choice is an important point there, isn't it? The people are not railroaded into one particular workshop. They actually got four to choose from each exactly. time. Exactly. So there is everything from exercise to art to meditation to juicing to tea to, you know, lot, lots of different things, RTT, reflexology. Um, and then we've got three sessions um, uh, in the main auditorium, um, to begin with so again we've got myself delivering a session on nutrition choices um, and then we've got Sam Watts looking at lifestyle choices and then we've got Patricia Pete talking about therapy choices so we've got those three main sessions nutrition lifestyle and therapies mm -hmm. all the tasters in between and then um, at the end, again, we've got an integration session where everyone can come together. There's an opportunity to reflect on everything that everyone's experienced that day and learnt and any insights that they've had. And we're hoping to get as many of the facilitators and speakers on stage as possible for that session as well for a Q&A session. Mm. So a really good rounding up and then you're going to come and talk about um the next steps what to do next excellent, um, excellent. well there's some great people in there many of them have been guests on this show of course so if people want to sort of check them out ahead of time just do a search on the show page of the yes life website and uh you'll be able to hear a bit of what they have to say um Okay, so that that's great, and uh, so the the stories are both very full days, basically. Lots of resources coming out of there. So coming back to the kind of the basic questions, uh, uh, can maybe you want to say a bit more about why someone needs to think about having a cancer team. What's it for? You know, why do we need one? Well, there's all sorts of benefits psychologically and physically as well actually so for example going through treatments um there is evidence both clinical evidence and anecdotal evidence to suggest that people who are looking after their nutrition in various ways often report fewer side effects going through treatment um and that's i know more obviously because nutrition is my thing that's what i know more about but i also know that there's been um, studies into the benefits of various different things like qigong and yoga and mindfulness and um, and not just on the the kind of the ability to mentally and psychologically handle what's going on, um, but we know, don't we, that you can't really separate out the mental and psychological from the physical. So if we can keep the nervous system and the adrenals calm in the body that has lots of impacts on how digestion works um inflammatory levels so inflammation levels in the body um how cells behave how tissue behaves um there are lots of impacts there so even if we're purely looking at things like reflexology and mindfulness um and so on as just calming everything down that's going to have beneficial physical effects as well that are going to help a person's physical recovery as well as their mental emotional psychological recovery um so i think you know there's there's emerging and growing research and evidence around all of that and um, but also just Knowing that you're not on your own, you've got people who are actually rooting for you, who you are communicating with, who are on your side. Mm. It's changing, so. but there's that whole relationship with um, oncologists and medical professionals traditionally where um, it just feels like a them and us and mm. not much communication not much compassion or empathy, not much inclusion in decisions. Um, just really, just on a convey about going through the process of, oh, you've got this type of cancer, we do this, then we do this, then we do this. Whereas when you're working with a team, 
that you've chosen of people who are on your side and communicating with you and you're 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 leading you're you're leading everything you're piloting your ship and there's something really very different about that and it's self-empowering um but also it does seem to it, it does seem to be emerging that that is important for recovery on lots of levels UK Health Radio the station that makes you feel good UK Health Radio the station that makes you feel good I think, you know, there are particular reasons to talk about this whole topic today in light of the environment of the UK, because, of course, it's different wherever you go as to what the, the setup of healthcare is. And with our particular one, I think there's a particular reasons to uh, put a lot of emphasis on having a team. Do you want to say a bit around that? Yeah, I mean, there, there are aspects of the NHS that have made a real effort to include integrative support um but it's very hit and miss um and there there has like i said it is changing but there has been a general attitude of um suspicion and um or dismissiveness um or you know real uh, negativity against um things like uh, the benefits of nutrition and um, uh, body work and um, herbs and other different therapies. So it's usually dismissive. So if somebody asks their um, oncologist or their doctor, should I, should I change my diet? Should I, um, should I go meditate more? Should I do some breath work? Um, there's normally either, oh, no, don't worry about that, or maybe a little bit of scorn or derision, or maybe an active, no, you absolutely shouldn't, Um, which is really tough. It's really tough to be faced with, no, nothing you do is going to make any difference, especially when that's simply not true. Absolutely. (laughs) And obviously the the NHS is in a really difficult place at the moment, um so where it there has been some strides forwards in these areas actually it's really struggling with the resources to do what it does day to day let alone what what can be perceived to be you know add-ons um Hmm. there are other countries where it's perceived to be much more at the heart i was looking at an interesting study um where there's been a few actually and there's one called integrative oncology international perspectives and this was just a couple of um well this was 2019 Mm -hmm. and they um were comparing uh integrative oncology services and use in the united states canada australia italy and western europe and the uk and actually the the use in uk is that it seems to be a little bit higher than I thought. So it's between 22 and 45% um, and 23% of public services at that time were offering um, integrative medicine approaches. Um, but that's not all NHS, that's also private sector as well. Yeah. Um, and why... While there was high advocacy, so they looked at the culture, so high advocacy from patient associations, but variable acceptability by physicians. Whereas if you compare that with America, for example, there was 50 to 60% use. So that's higher. And most of the 45 um, comprehensive cancer centres offered integrative oncology. Um, so mostly mind and body practices, consultations for natural products, and lifestyle and a lot of that was funded um through philanthropy um 
everyone's really, you know, the patients and the physicians and the oncologists are, uh, you know, increasingly more supportive of that approach. The, the main criticism or, or concern in is the America seems to be that there is a lot of um, unregulated information and advice out there. Um, but generally, the attitude is much more positive. And then you've got other areas like Italy, where in the north, 58% of public cancer services offer integrative medicine, but really? not in South Italy. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. It's very much in the culture there. So, and there are, you know, there are certain places in the world where it, that we've kept hold of that cultural um, attachment or the, or, the, or the cultural wisdom of what's come mm. before. Whereas in the UK, we've we've severed ties, yeah, with that, much. and it's it's hard to bring that back in again once you've severed those ties. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Okay, so um, there's going to be listeners at all stages of uh, cancer who are listening. Uh, some people may have just been diagnosed, other people may have been uh, uh, finished their treatment. But uh, ideally, when would you be thinking about getting yourself a team and is there a wrong or a right time? There's no wrong or right time to do it. I mean, ideally pre-diagnosis which you know sounds a bit ridiculous but there's a one example that I think I've shared with you before is um somebody who came to see me uh a few days before she had her breast cancer diagnosis um and what was really wonderful about that was she she knew she had this lump she didn't know what the diagnosis was going to be but we talked about the different options and we talked about what she could do. Um, and then she said that when she went in and had the diagnosis, she knew she had a plan. Amazing. And that made a difference in terms of her response to the diagnosis. I imagine. Um, but not everybody's going to come there at that. And, and I, ideally at diagnosis, I often get... Um, emails or messages from people saying oh I've just had a cancer diagnosis I've been recommended to come and see you but I'm gonna wait till after I've had my treatment right drives me mad that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely and I kind of get it because there's so much going on mm. and you know they might not have the headspace to take on more than than what they're actually going through and all the information that they're dealing with at that time but actually, that's the ideal time mm. to start building a cancer team, even if it's just one or two people supporting you through that process. Because as I was saying before, there's there's lots of evidence out there showing that um, various interventions like exercise um, can help reduce the um, side effects of treatment um, and various nutritional protocols, whether it's fasting or fasting mimicking um or um you know certain medicinal mushrooms there, there's lots of evidence there that actually you can that can support you and within my experience um so i've worked with you know so many people going through treatment over the years and to be honest with you robin and i'm not the only person to have said this but when i go to um, conferences on the conference where people are talking about the side effects of their treatment I'm often quite shocked because most of the people I work with they obviously everyone gets some sort of side effects but not nearly as severe as people who aren't doing anything it mm. seems to me mm. you know that's not I haven't done a uh, you know double blind placebo control you know study around this but from my observations and from the observations of other um nutritional therapists and naturopaths um i've spoken with um and herbalists as well so you know the, there's definitely a benefit and also knowing that again you're not going through treatment on your own and whatever treatment you choose to do you've got people who are not judging you they're not telling you what you should be doing um and they've got a level of support that that you can you know you can really trust in and that they're, they're really helping you to 
trust yourself and trust your own body through this as well. Very important. Yeah, I think if people had any idea of the kind of battleground they were going into with conventional treatment and going in kind of naked, if you like, with no resources to actually do anything about uh, the things that they were going to have to suffer through, uh, they would think again. But I think too often people think, well, you know, as you say, they've got too much on their plate. They've got too much to think about already just, you know, with what's being laid at their door uh, from the oncologist. Um, uh, and all the, the life changes that are going to go around going through treatment, you know, just logistically doing it, um, that, uh, yeah, another thing, it, see, it seems like an extra burden, but of course it's anything but that. Um, this is actually the major, major resource to support them in a very difficult time. So, um, yeah, so anybody who's listening who uh, might be thinking of that, I'll start when I finish treatment thing, Please listen up. Ben, yeah. And, you know, get some support from somebody who knows what's appropriate during treatment. He's got some experience um, with this so that they can really, you know, somebody who really knows um, what what's, what's safe to recommend, what isn't safe to recommend, um, and has got the... The, the knowledge and experience to work with people going through treatment yeah. so work whatever you're looking at yeah and, and take things at your own pace as well so with things like you know there's so much um information around um exercise um and if you're working with somebody who is a specialist in this so we've got a scarlet roberts for example at mm. the um june online session um and we've uh, got Kieran at the October 17th session as well. They're, they're both very experienced um, with this. So if you're working with somebody like that, they can help you pace yourself. So you're not, so you're doing enough, but you're not mm -hmm. overstretching yourself. You're doing the right things. You're focusing on the right kinds of exercise and you're not over pushing certain types that, you know, might not be appropriate for you right now. Mm -hmm. All very important. Yeah, I think, you know, you you could go for a minimalist team, really, if you just really can't cope with much. If you had either uh, an exercise professional who understands cancer, uh, is trained in cancer, or a nutritionist who's likewise uh, with a long experience of supporting people through cancer, and you have some, at least one person who will just help you practically, you know, the real day-to-day -day stuff of actually what's got to be done to get through all this. Uh, that's, that's a good start. That's a really good team. Uh, and could do an awful lot to help you. Yeah, everyone is kind of a, a, a PA or a, or a buddy, doesn't they? Or it, yeah. We've, we've even actually got a session on that in the October, um, at the October events, you know, how to be a really good cancer buddy and, you know, what to expect. So the events aren't just for people who have a cancer diagnosis. They're also for people that want to get involved supporting. Right people and you know and for people like me so I can go and find out more so you know I currently have quite a few people that I refer right. people I've got herbalists that I refer to um I've got mindfulness experts and uh, uh counselors and hypnotherapists that I refer people to and it's just an opportunity for me to to broaden my referral team so mm. that oh yeah I hadn't thought about that that would be really good I think for this person that i'm working with currently right, right. um yes lots of perks there yeah so i digressed a little bit that's <laughs> fine we like a bit of digression so uh you know it, i think it, it's good that people realize the context we have here because not everybody does is that you know in the uk integrative medicine for cancer hasn't really happened as such you know that in other countries you can go to one place where they'll but offer you all these things under one roof which of course is ideal because all the people are genuinely working together, referring to each other as to the best uh, course of treatment for this one person, you know, which things are going to work together best. So that's the idea. We haven't got it. So the, the next best thing is uh, you yourself being the central point, if you like, and connecting to a whole range of different people in your team, uh, one of whom is your oncologist, of course. And uh, and then building your own integrative care package from that uh, with all the advice you're given. So, 
Yeah, that, that's kind of the picture we're, we're dealing with here in this country. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. So we've talked about diagnosis and during treatment, and what we haven't talked mm. about is post treatment. Uh, right, thank you. And actually, this um, so this is kind of like the immediate post treatment, which includes recovery from treatment. So, for mm-hmm. example, if somebody has been through radiotherapy, they may not have been um, described to them just how tired they might feel for the next few months, for example. Um, not everybody does, but that can very much be a thing. Um, and, you know, other other aspects, you know, coming coming out of chemotherapy, for example, different people will, will come out of that with different things that they may need support with physically. Um, but actually that's often when the the kind of the the emotional psychological tidal wave hits because although going through treatment is is really tough and comes with its own um issues there's also a structure to it and there's a oh this is what i'm doing today and there's a the, you know there's appointments there's things to do there's um things to focus on and once that goes and you're on your own out there post treatment, it can suddenly be quite a weird space to be in. So this is where often I mean everyone has a completely different experience. So this isn't gonna happen for everybody, but often I see it's post treatment that actually the the emotional fallout happens and that might be uh, depression it might be anxiety it it could take it could look like a lot of different things um but it's often unexpected and also friends family are like we're well, here you're through treatment now life just gets back to normal but it's not it really isn't and it's so hard to explain to somebody who hasn't been through um cancer diagnosis or treatment whether it's you know surgery or what, whatever the treatment has been it's really tough to explain that actually it's not all happy days are here again afterwards. Um, there's a new, there's a, that really is a new normal to navigate. And that's not just in the short term either. In the long term, there's like, you know, you might be having three monthly scans or annual scans for a few years. And there's the whole scan anxiety that can um, build up for a few weeks coming up to the scan and just be horrendous waiting for the scan results. And then general health anxiety for years afterwards, you know, that, uh, you know, a little niggle, oh, is that cancer is often the best thought for, for many years right. afterwards. It's really, you know, and it's not something that is easy to explain or understand if that's not what's going on. Um, you know, if you've never been through anything like that. Right. So you need a lot of resources to carry on helping with that. Um, and in terms of yeah, mindfulness and yoga and qigong and sound healing and all of those, that, that can be really useful. Um, but also with things like, you know, with nutrition, for example, it's not just about, oh, well, I'm doing the right things, I'm, you know, giving myself the best chance of staying healthy. It's also about keeping blood sugar stable so that actually moods are easier to balance um, and and you can really navigate and manage, you know, stress resilience through nutrition and through exercise as well. So the short-term and long-term post-treatment as well, it's still important to have that team and that team of people that understand that it's not all over now. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, you know, you uh, have experience of both sides of the fence here. You've been a cancer patient and you've already alluded to how amazing it was to inadvertently get yourself a team back 25 years ago. But of course, you've been on so many people's teams as well uh, since. So 
Do you want to just tell us a bit about the experience from both sides and, and uh, uh, you know, really why you set so much store by it? Yeah, so when I was going through um, my experience, um, that I wasn't offered... Actually, that's not entirely true. I was referred to a pain management clinic where they did actually provide me with a chakra meditation tape, mm. um, which was wonderful. Um, but there was very little other than that. Um, there was, and I was asking around and that there was just nothing. But I came across this wonderful woman, um, Kitty Sava, who is an expert in a form of shiatsu-like treatment called Seiki. And I worked quite closely with her for a number of years. And she helped me process so much physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically through this amazing modality. How about that? that? was kind of like a bodywork uh, modality. Um, that was really special. Um and I, yeah, and there were, you know, I got into yoga and qigong and meditation. Um, I couldn't have done it without all of those things. And I was lucky because I lived in Brighton and it was all here. A good centre for that, yeah. yeah. But I was very aware my treatment was in London and I, I, I was up, yeah, there didn't seem to be much there at the time. But so I, I know how important all of this is um when I then qualified and trained in nutrition and started working um with people with cancer um I started working with Dr Andre Young Snell at the Vision of Hope Clinic in Brighton um which I still do and that's been amazing because um because we do (laughs) We do refer to each other, and when we do, we share notes. We have regular meetings where we discuss our insights and what we think is is going to be the best kind of support. Um, I've learned so much from Dr. Andre, and along the years, you know, he was looking at a functional medicine test before functional medicine was a thing. So I right. early learning in there. Um, so yeah, it's been really amazing to have that, and to to for me actually to have somebody like that, um, to be on the team with somebody like that has been hugely beneficial for my progress as a as a nutritional therapist, and you know just to have somebody whose opinion I trust and value to um, bounce things off, and um, so that's been really great. But it doesn't always work like that. Usually there will be people that I've referred people to or maybe they already have somebody on their team. So there's a a wonderful woman I've been working with for years now um, and she has a medical herbalist on her team um, and she has a couple of other people that support her in kind of spiritual ways. And I don't have direct contact with her medical herbalist, but she shares with me um what he recommends and why and I don't have direct contact with her oncologist but she shares all the paperwork with me and tells me about all of the meetings so um I can make sure that I'm working within what's going on with the rest of her team um rather than overloading her with too much or um suggesting stuff that's working at against what she's doing with other people um so it, the way I work is I'm, I'm I'm very respectful um of of what's going on and I just try to work harmoniously and synergistically um with whoever that person has chosen for their team mm, mm. Uh, rather than try and take it over or just overload her with so much to do and so many supplements on top of all of the herbs and everything else that she's doing um, that she doesn't know, you know, her day is just about popping pills and doing. Yeah, I'm sure that's hugely important to take that kind of balanced approach to things. Anyway, there she is. She's acting as that kind of central point in that she's collecting up all the information and making sure that other people have the, all the information and therefore can fit in appropriately. So that's an important position, isn't it? 
It is, but it's also a full-time job, actually. And if you've got somebody who can help you with that, um, then that's, I mean, that's gold dust, isn't it? And mm. somebody who can help you, who are really supporting you, not not trying to direct you or tell you what to do, but just supporting your decisions, um, that's, that's really priceless. Mm. One thing I will say is that um, I very, very, very frequently find myself directing people to the Yes to Life website. <laughs> There's so many resources on there um, for people um, and so many opportunities to help find and put together their... That's great. Um, ...their cats. That's great. Yeah, well, we like to hear that. We're trying to be useful here. Um, OK, so... Maybe we could finish off uh, just to give a little a bit of a sales pitch for the in-person event at the end of the year, reasons for people to get on that train or whatever it is to get to London to go to the event. Uh, there's more than just the, the talks and the workshops, uh, but uh, maybe you tell us a bit more about the workshops because there's plenty of those. And what else can people expect when they're there? Okay, well, the community. Community is so important, isn't it? So um, whether you are somebody with cancer diagnosis or somebody who's a practitioner or who wants to be a practitioner or who is supporting somebody through their um, cancer journey, um, just having that opportunity to meet people, to connect, to share insights, wisdom, um, learn. I mean, that's all very crucial. Um, in terms of the actual workshops in the breakout sessions, um, we've got uh, sessions on RTT, reflexology, hypnotherapy, qigong movement and sound, um, therapeutic teas, um, groups and one-to-one -one support, which is Shafia and Sarah from the Yes to Life. Both very important sessions to find out about how much there is on offering those. That's another fantastic resource to have a group that you're part of where you have like-minded people you can share things with. Hugely important. Yeah, and how to make the most of that kind of group yeah. as well. And also the one-to-one -one for people who are maybe not ready for a group yet. You know, that's a similarly fantastic support. Yeah, I I would have loved something like that. Mm. Work. There's yoga. There's mushroom science. Um, art for cancer. So art therapy, plant based nutrition, superfoods, exercise. Um. Also, we've got a really lovely session on funding as well because some of this stuff you can access for free or low cost. Um. But some of it actually, you know, can can cost quite a bit of money for some of the people that you might want to have on your team and not everybody has that and what one thing that I'm really passionate about is accessibility um on all sorts of levels um and one of those levels is is financial accessibility so I think it's really important to have that session on how to fund all of this mm. absolutely okay well look uh I'm very much looking forward to both events. As I, say, I think they're, they're going to deliver a lot to people who are, uh, you know, needing to find resources. Um, been really brilliant working with you on developing both these programs. Uh, I'm completely delighted with what we put together. Um, so, uh, yeah, big thank you to you for your unstinting support of Yes to Life and of these events and uh, helping to make them as best they can be. Uh, you know, it's such a joy to um to work with a charity that is so open heartedly supportive of integrative um medicine um and you know you worked tirelessly over the years robin to help um educate and further the education of people to empower people to support people to nourish people in lots of different ways and I, I just love everything about the Esther Life charity. So that's that's why I've always wanted to do 
everything that I can to support it. And it's actually a real privilege to be such a huge part of this year's annual conference. It, it's mm. a real joy. So I'm so I'm really grateful to the, to to be able to do this. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. I look forward to sharing the platform with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Kirsten. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Both conferences are available to those in need at below cost prices, especially if you book now and take advantage of the early bird prices, and also if you book both events at once. We're able to offer such low prices due to the support we receive from a raft of businesses and other organizations that are attending or simply supporting the events. To read more about the speakers and facilitators, the program, or any other details, you can look at the dedicated website that's at yestolifeannualconference.org, or you can also get there via the events section of the main Yes to Life website, that's yestolife.org.uk. Once on the dedicated website, of course, you can book your place at one or both of the events, and I do hope you'll want to come to both. The dates again are the 17th of June for the online event and the 7th of October for the in-person event in Euston, London. I also want to tell you about next week's Yes to Life show. It's a special extended edition called Pioneers of Integrative Oncology. In my work with Yes to Life, I've been fortunate to be introduced to many of the people who are the bright lights pushing the frontiers of what was possible in cancer care well before Yes to Life was even thought of. And when I say well before, I mean something like 20 years before. These people are all my heroes, and it's a privilege and a pleasure to be able to count them amongst my friends now. The extended show is the result of an idea to bring six of them together through the wonders of modern video calling and host a panel event combining the wisdom of these giants of the integrative oncology space. Featuring in the show, we have Dr. Bernie Siegel, author of the groundbreaking book Love, Medicine and Miracles and tireless campaigner for mind-body medicine. Ian Gawler, author of another hugely influential book, You Can Conquer Cancer. Another huge advocate for mind-body medicine and particularly meditative techniques. Ralph Moss, science writer and researcher, recognized the world over for his forensic exposés of the pharmaceutical sector through seminal books such as The Cancer Industry, Questioning Chemotherapy, and more recently, Cancer Incorporated. Dr. Keith Block, appropriately described as the father of integrative oncology for his bold stance in the 1980s in combining conventional oncology treatments with a raft of natural and lifestyle approaches. Michael Lerner, founder of the revolutionary Commonweal Center in California and author of the first book on complementary and lifestyle approaches to cancer that was well received by the medical establishment for its rigor and its circumspect approach, Choices in Healing. And he's also a pioneer of the hugely informative web resource Beyond Conventional Cancer Therapies, relaunched and vastly expanded in 2022 as cancerchoices.org. And finally, Patria King, who has been inspiring and supporting people with cancer through her books, courses and public events, both at the Quest for Life Centre in Australia and internationally for 40 years. Truly a powerhouse lineup, brought together for the first time to answer questions about the progress of integrative oncology sent in by current practitioners whose work rests on the shoulders of these pioneers. This is a unique event and not to be missed. Whether you are someone benefiting from the power of integrative oncology who'd like to hear directly the accumulated wisdom of these trailblazers, or are a practitioner or other healthcare professional whose every day is deeply rooted in their work, make a point of tuning in next week to listen. Thanks for listening today. I look forward to bringing you this special edition of the show, Pioneers of Integrative Oncology, here on UK Health Radio next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.